talk about this this is courtesy of mix Mag. this is actually some good news actually on the smaller club sort of scene type of thing right this is kind of mix Mag. it says the title here bradley zero and nathaniel williams launch new hi-fi buy in tottenham moco one thing that's funny though when you look at the picture of these two guys if ever you wanted two people to represent what owning a hi-fi by hi-fi bar looked like it'd be these two don't they don't they look like two guys that would own a hi-fi bar like do you know what i mean just looking at them just look like those two guys but in general i think it's awesome because they have another one which i still haven't been to the first one called jumbi and that's been doing absolute bits i think they actually celebrated their first year anniversary i can't believe it from the first time i covered them on the fucking pod when they first launched this year and said how amazing it sounded till now it's already been one year like time goes by so flipping fast let me just double check my phone here i'm pretty sure it's been one year yeah i featured it what i think i featured them oh no okay I, I must have not made a clip about it but essentially they've been open for a year so big up jumbi and big up them for doing that but let's read the article it says bradley zero and nathaniel williams um have launched a new venture in tottenham called moco called moco sorry now this new one the new hi-fi bar will open its doors for the first time on friday the 18th of august which is coming up so if you're around london definitely go check it out this follows the launch of their popular successful peckham based bar called jumbi so they've got one in north one in south sorry at the moment one in north and tottenham if you don't know anything about london then you'd know that you wouldn't know that that area of tottenham is where a lot of the warehouses that are you know ha you know that house the kind of the funky hipstery uh <laughs> cool kids are they all kind of live in those sort of areas because i think before it was hackney week but then now because i think a lot of the demolition and renovation work a lot of those warehouse spaces have gone so they are now all kind of gone to those spaces because there's a lot of kind of open space and industrial spaces and warehouses that they can kind of convert into temporary living spaces and i'm sure a lot of the property guardianship things run around that area too so not the best community not the best um transport or you know links but when it comes to finding different spaces and shit interesting spaces to do cool things in whether it's a hi-fi bar or have your own store or flip in a restaurant or whatever it may be or just you know live there or a studio definitely those places are places to go or maybe further out than that as well they definitely exist it continues back to the article muku or muku moko how do you pronounce it muku or moko i'm gonna say moko moko offers a similar setup to jumbi bringing the same one deck hi-fi restaurant meets blues car party concept across the river from peckham the quote for those in the know the word moko is synonymous with jumbi the team explained on social media primarily known as a stilt walker character performed at carnival the word traces origins to west africa as an or what as an orisha god of retribution moko is the ying of jumbi's yang a character that exists in caribbean folklore as a healer a protector deity in contrast to jumbi's spirit and archetypal tricks or so essentially this is like a what a caribbean juju music bar in a way right it's kind of wild right they kind of they kind of you know on on paper promoting caribbean juju in the hopes of getting people to i don't know to play fucking some what's her name lady saw or something tune right <laughs> honestly man you gotta love fucking music people absolutely <laughs> incredible i'm fucking on this um let's see some of the pictures here you see the guys here standing in front of this amazing amazing looking speakers and also a whole back section full of fucking vinyl the idea behind music listening bar things is quite cool um i've kind of known about it mostly because of my infatuation with like japanese tokyo culture and shit and i know they've got a lot of those things over there because they have a huge scene of audio files over there who just incredibly nerdy and geeky and obsessed with the best audio um the best speakers the best turntables the best whatever when it comes to music listening and they create these really amazing cool chill sort of like spaces where people can just go and sit drink cocktails you know listen to core music you know in a sort of deep way intimate way without all the mixing and the tricking and the effects and the smoke machines and shit and it being one record at a time it also reminds me of the old paradise garage days right the david mancuso days right the idea of kind of just cultivating the space playing amazing 
tunes, providing people with a soundtrack, but just taking it very slow, playing the whole record out, no mixing, flipping on one deck, like all that stuff is fucking amazing. So I love all that about it. Um, and also providing like a different sort of tempo from a club. So if you want to, if you want kind of club quote unquote music, maybe you won't listen to this on your headphones day to day, but you'll listen to it in a rich sound you know, system, have some drinks in a bar, then I guess a listening bar is the best option for it. Um, the flyer also is really cool. I think their art direction has been on point since they've launched Jumbi and obviously this bar called Moko. I think they've done a good way of doing it. Um, as you can see there, they've got the opening weekend happening. Um, let's continue here. Uh, let's actually read the Instagram caption. It says, um, from SE15 to N15, we invite you to join us on Friday and Saturday from 8 p.m. till late. It's free. There'll be special guest DJs and free drinks and finger foods for the first visitors. So be there early. Um, housed in the 1087 complex, just a short walk from Seven Sisters Tube. The venue holds a legacy of the previous local institution of the place, five miles and craving um, to provide such a needed space for communities in and around the area. Okay, cool. I've never heard of this 1087 space, but that sounds interesting. Much like our beloved Jumbi. Okay, they've got the flags there. The booth built from oak wood, um, solid oak, sorry. But one of by one of leading London's leading designers, Don Heston, and illuminated by a person called Lucas Sensory, will house a community vinyl library, which will be home to a regular contribution from our guests and residents. We open late every night from Tuesday till Saturday for now, um, and entry is always free. I don't like how they never just say the time that they again. This is another little kind of nitpicky thing from London. For some reason, London clubs hate putting out set list because I think the idea behind it is that most people want to see the headliner, but if you're a promoter or if you're a venue owner, you want to make sure people stay and drink and get high for the majority of the night. So you don't put out set lists in the hopes that people will, dumb enough will think to arrive there at 11 and hope to see the fucking headlining DJ play at 12. That's what you basically do. But I feel like nowadays, most people are educated ravers. They know what they want. They know what they want to see. If you're going to arrive early, you're going to arrive early, regardless of who's playing. And if you're going to come late, you're going to come late. But you can help me inform my decision by just giving me the set list so I know who's playing and who's not. Most of the time you don't, you just you kind of have to look at the, the decks and then it's all dark and it's, you know, whatever. And you have to kind of go through the crowd to figure out who's playing. It's just annoying. I wish they would kind of just put out set lists. And the other thing I don't like is this insistence on not saying what time things close. So it's just open late every night. It's like, what does that mean? It's late 12. Is late one? Is late two? Is it three? Is it four? Is it five? Is it six? Like, just tell me what time it is. It doesn't matter. Like, but I guess, you know, the mystery is important. Oh, what time is it going to close? Is it my last drink or can I order more? It's like, ugh, enough. Anyway, we continue. We're also taking our coffee very seriously, holding us high standards of, by cravings. Um, set by cravings, sorry, working with a state, state of the art um, Sineso equipment. Um, speciality roasters and trained baristas. No person shall be left uncaffeinated. Okay, cool. So that's nice as well. So they'll have cocktails. They'll have, you know, they'll have cooking good coffees, good music. You can't complain. The venue is due to shop at the make, sorry, the venue is set to set up shop on Tottenham's Markfield Road where former nightclub Five Miles was forced to close 2020. One man's, you know, misery another man's fucking glory much of our beloved jimmy will shining light on the sounds and flavors afro caribbean diaspora the community setting just sorry the contemporary setting with audio file sound courtesy of london's based um bespoke audio studio friendly pressure um so as well as offering free entry mocha is also served to specialty coffee and resident chefs are going to be there every tuesday and saturday from 12 p.m to 10 p.m so they tell you about the food times but they don't tell you when the DJs are playing. Fucking annoying. Local celebration launches on 18th and 19th, 8 p.m. until late, as per usual. No set time. Do special guest DJ sets, free drinks and finger foods. So, yeah, check it out if you want. I'll probably end up going there sometime along the day. Um, it looks really cool. It looks really nice. Um, it's interesting because I don't think I've ever actually seen Bradley Zero DJ in IRL. I don't think so. Um, and again, most of it just comes from this weird divide that seems to exist between like South and East, because I feel like whenever I imagine or think of Bradley Zero's music or sets, I kind of just imagine, you know, stuff that's happening down in South and Peckham and shit when I wasn't really going there, especially, you know, because I just mostly was hanging around the East and I was too lazy to go down to South and I didn't want to have to get an Uber all the way back home after fucking 12 or whatnot because the night buses were taking long and there was no fucking overground. But then it also kind of kind of for me in my head links a lot to nts which i've never listened to i don't know if you guys are the same but i feel like i'm a you know somewhat immersed in the scene 
I go to a lot of clubs. I love a lot of music. I DJ myself, but I legitimately have never listened to a single radio show on NTS. I don't even know how they start. I, you know I mean, I know they've got a site. They probably have an app that, that works pretty well, but I think that whole South scene, for some reason, it might, it might be in my head, but I feel like they kind of, you know, latched onto that whole online radio thing way better than I did. Um, or maybe even East, because the one I'm talking about, I swear the fucking head office or the HQ is in fucking Dawson, isn't it? So maybe I'm, maybe I'm just the odd one out, but I feel like I've always missed out on that sound particularly because of that. And then I think thirdly, I don't know, there was just, whenever I looked at the guy, I just kind of imagined it'd be somebody that I wouldn't like. I don't know why it is. Maybe it's because of the South thing. You know, there's lots of arts unis down there. They all kind of take themselves a little bit too seriously. Maybe it's that kind of vibe. I'm not really too sure. Maybe, maybe there's something in it, but I'm sure they're all lovely people. I'm sure the space is flipping amazing. And ju judging by the success of the first one and clearly them opening the second one, it's clear to see. But, you know, as great as this is, it's just annoying that we don't get the same sort of enthusiasm put behind fucking nightclubs. They don't want to give us nightclubs, but they give us listening bars. You know what I mean, it's just a little bit annoying. I'd love to kind of go all the way and have everything, you know, a couple of new clubs, a couple of listening bars. I think that will help to kind of, odd, weirdly enough, it'll help to alleviate some of the issues that are happening with our services in terms of police, in terms of ambulances. They'll see a lot of those things, you know, chill out a bit if they kind of spread the load across all these little venues. But, you know, I don't know jack shit. Here I am talking in this small room with this weird angled fucking webcam. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, Jeremy. I'm just a fucking idiot. So I'll just leave it to the experts and I'll just keep ranting into the wind. <laughs> ranting into the wind. <laughs>